Hello. Hi. Lou and Kate here. We are going to show you how to pour quite a tricky mould with resin, um, how to fill it easily without making a mess. Um, we're asked this a lot. We are. And we've got fillet resin here, so it's nice and runny, which is great for pouring into bead moulds. It's also great because it's crystal clear, so quite often people will use, especially this European bead mould, to cast things like um, precious flowers mm. or even ashes, things like that. So we're going to show you what to do. So first of all, you're going to want to make sure your mould is nice and clean. You can use a wet wipe, but don't be scrubbing it hard. Just a, a nice gentle wipe will do. You could also use some warm soapy water, um, but whatever you do, you just don't want to scrub it because you need your mould to be nice and shiny. So um, these inside are what are going to keep the hole on your pegs. We call them hole on your pegs, hole on your beads. <laughs> oh dear. We call them pegs, it's fine. Okay, we're going to... Um, be very careful, but we're going to just kind of pull the peg to one side and slowly drip our resin in and around. And we can just do a little tap as we go. So what we're not going to do is just chuck it in like this because it goes everywhere <laughs> and it's a nightmare and you need to be slow and steady and careful. Come to the expert. <laughs> okay, so think about um, where you want to start. I'm right-handed, so I tend to start from the right-hand side and move across to the left but whatever's easiest for you. I take my cocktail stick and I- Toothpick if you're in America. Yeah. And I slowly pull the peg to the side. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is just very gently ease the peg to the side. It makes it easier for me to pull the resin into the mold. And it's nice and runny because I've not long mixed it up. So I can just slowly drip in the resin. You might want to have um, some glitters and some pretty bits in. You could add those glitters and pretty bits in after and just kind of gently encapsulate them around the peg. You can use your stick just to make sure that you've got it all the way around. And then if you need to, a little tap just to help any bubbles that are trapped around your glitters and pretty bits rise to the surface. The other thing that Lou did there, but she didn't mention, is when she poured into the mould, <laughs> at the end, when she'd finished, she used her stick to just pull up any drips of resin. So you don't want any extra drips of resin appearing on your mould or overflowing the edge, which could mean that you have a lot more sanding to do afterwards. But you might want a little drip on the side of your mould. Why do we do this? To test whether it's ready. So if you're somebody who wants to prod and tweak and see if your resin is ready, the worst thing you can be doing is touching and prodding your main creation. So a top tip, we always put a little bit of resin on the side of the mould and that is the bit that you can prod and touch and pick and tweak away and you'll know when that's set that your main pieces are set. So we fill it resin about three to four days and we can take them out of the mould. Great. Don't be doing this. Don't be doing that. Resin everywhere. Yay!